Welcome and thank you for joining the Atlantic and Baxalta for this very important discussion. My name is David Meek. I'm the president of oncology at Baxalta. We're a global biopharmaceutical company and we specialize in treatments for hematology, immunology, and oncology. And on behalf of the Atlantic and Baxalta, we're thrilled that everyone's here today. And uh, before we, um, and also the speakers, what a great panel that was before as well. I, you know, every time you hear a true expert in the, in the research field, we learn something. So Levi did just a great job. When we talk about uh, developing and providing access to new therapies uh, for cancer patients at Baxalta, those patients with rare and underserved cancers, uh, we use a patient-centric mindset to develop uh, our new and innovative therapies. And that's what we want to talk about on this panel and bringing together a small part of the ecosystem to develop and provide access to new and innovative therapies to patients. So we've got a panel of diverse individuals, a couple of them you just saw in the video, and I'm thrilled to invite the panel up. So let me uh, first have uh, Rick Adati, as you heard, he's a founder of Positive Exposure, and uh, it's a not-for-profit organization that, as you saw in the lobby, they use many different forms of media to, uh, to show these patients with rare and underserved cancer. So Rick, would you mind coming on up? Thank you very much, Rick, for being here. Um, Taylor, who you also saw in the video, Taylor is an acute lymphoblastic leukemia survivor, is a young, uh, is a child. Um, she survived ALL and now she's a patient advocate. So we're thrilled Taylor's here. Matthew Kane is the CEO and co-founder of Precision Biosciences. Precision Biosciences is a genome editing organization and they're developing next generation therapy. You see much of it in the press today and we're thrilled to have a partnership with them around gene editing and CAR T therapy and very important allogeneic CAR T therapy. So we're thrilled that Matthew is here. And our final panelist is Peter Lavins. Peter is the head of drug development at Merrimack Pharmaceuticals. Merrimack is a biotech company based in Cambridge, and they do research, develop, and commercialize drugs for uh, patients with cancer. So we're thrilled to have our panel with us today. And um, with Rick and Taylor, you guys look great on the video. You look even better in person. So thank you very much for being here today. And Rick, I, I have to say, uh, you've been a photographer, and you've you got to grab Rick at the end because he's got some great stories. He's photographed some of the most famous people in the world, and many of those folks have very visible, uh, you'll, you'll know who they are by what you see, but you're now, you've taken it to another level, and you're photographing people for what you don't see, and maybe that is a cancer or some rare disease. It's not physically visible. So would you mind telling us sure. about how you got into this and you know, what your objective and, and your quest and, and what your new company is? Thanks a lot, Rick. Sure, thanks. Um, well, photograph, working with, with Max Holt on this incredible program as, and this campaign wasn't so much about photographing people living with cancer, photographing cancers or, or advocates. It was photographing humanity, seeing, seeing that person, seeing beyond diagnosis, seeing the person, photographing that person, collaborating on an image that will really kind of create not only a visibility, but also the platform for a dialogue to start the initial conversations, start a challenging stigma, but also talking looking beyond that and really creating opportunities across the board to start these dialogues. Uh, in order for us to really kind of step up and, and kind of work within this campaign, we really have to start talking about it. We have to create lots of opportunities to feel comfortable talking about these differences. So again, it's not photographing cancers here, it's photographing humanity and, and celebrating the humanity and the dignity of all of our incredible, incredible ambassadors that are featured in this exhibition. Oh, thanks, thank, thanks a lot, Rick. So Taylor. Um, as, you, as you mentioned in the video, the rare and underserved cancer community doesn't always have the resources that some of the relatively larger um, cancers have. So talk to us a little bit about maybe some of the resources and access to ideas, people, whatever it may be that you would like to see for some of the groups that you work with. Um, yeah, I mean, for me growing up, I was diagnosed when I was four with leukemia and I grew up surrounded in the cancer world and I lost so many friends along the way. But, you know, being able to have access to the people who are creating the things that are saving your life and knowing what those are, I mean, especially as a kid, for a kid to understand in a, you know, a pediatric mindset 
what's happening to them, you know, can help them through their experience and make it not so scary or, you know, can better their experience with cancer as a whole and, you know, not make it so negative. And I think that's my whole thing is turning it into a positive. I mean, cancer is not positive, but their experience um, can really change the way that they go on throughout life afterwards um, and continue to live after. The perspective that Rick and also Taylor can give is really from the patient side, the advocacy side, which, which is really critical and something we'd like to stay close to as we develop new therapies for cancer patients. I'm going to switch now to, to Matthew and to Peter, and maybe to Matthew first. And before I turn it over to Matthew, uh, we have a partnership with Precision Biosciences and Merrimack. Uh, pharmaceuticals. We're really proud of these partnerships to bring and provide new therapies to patients. So when we talk about the, the biotech side and the drug development side and the partnerships, uh, you, you heard from Levi, it, it takes an ecosystem to do this. It, it's not just one company, it's not just the government, it's not just advocacy. It does take a lot of people to develop and research drugs. So maybe Matthew, you can talk about the partnerships and why it's important not to just be alone in what you're doing. Yeah, a absolutely. Um, so, you know, I think the, on the one hand, the, the big, phar the big uh, uh, pharmaceutical companies play arguably the most important role in our ecosystem. They have, to, uh, they have to actually deliver the product to the patient. That means education, that means figuring out pricing, distribution, in many cases globally, and manufacturing, which is incredibly complex. And it doesn't leave a lot of air in the room for uh, developing innovative, potentially groundbreaking new technologies. And that's where uh, smaller emerging biotechnology companies like Precision Biosciences really fit into the ecosystem. In our case, we've developed a, a novel genome editing technology that's uh, very exciting and can literally enable us to, to edit, just as you would with Microsoft Word, the genomes of, uh, of, uh, of living organisms. But that in itself is not a product, and that's why we're so excited to be working with a group like Baxalta um, and being able to share in their expertise in rare disease and their expertise in actually taking these ideas and these concepts that companies like ours have and turning them into products. So we think we greatly increase the odds of actually um, reaching the bedside at some point with some potentially um, game-changing technologies. Thanks, Matthew. So Peter, uh, as I mentioned, he's the head of drug development at Merrimack. And Merrimack, in the past year, has launched a drug for metastatic pancreatic cancer. And if you don't know much about metastatic pancreatic cancer, it is one of those rare cancers. It's a, it is a rare cancer in the U.S. It's a rare cancer ex-U.S. The survival rates for patients with metastatic pancreatic cancer are devastating. Uh, in five years after diagnosis, less than 5% of the patients who were diagnosed are alive. After one year, after the initial diagnosis, less than 20% of those patients are still alive. So Merrimack has done a marvelous job of bringing this new uh, innovative product to the market. And maybe you can talk, uh, Peter, a little bit about some of the disconnects and why we need to make sure those disconnects working together as partners, uh, maybe what some of the downfall of those disconnects would be if they do happen. Yeah, I think, it, you know, if, it, thanks. I just didn't do need to comment that it's just been a tremendous pleasure working with, with Baxalta through this, this initiative around uh, pancreatic cancer. It was, it's a disease that is highly lethal, and it's a disease where there's been just so many failures that people have stepped away from it for fear of the risk. And, you know, Baxalta stepped into the fray with us to, to go after pancreatic cancer when we're very excited about that. But a lot of the disconnect had been about previous failures and industry had not been ready to go in places where there was high risk. Mm -hmm. uh, and the real risk here was that they didn't have a deep understanding of the disease type, the patient type, the individual with the condition. And so, you know, to move forward, we want to have interactions that really bring those three factors that you've heard of today. It's the, it's the insight to the patient, the person, it's the clinical perspective for the treating oncologists, and then it's the research perspective, the depth of insight in biology and bringing it together. So one of the collaborations that we have together with Baxalta actually goes much deeper. You know, for example, we're working with um, Patrick Reynolds at Texas Tech, their labs where they've been studying pediatric uh, cancers and understanding a particular one called Ewing sarcoma. The depth of understanding about Ewing sarcoma and through ongoing interactions between our research scientists and Dr. Reynolds, 
has shown a path that, that, that our therapy uh, may have a role in that very difficult patient type. So that collaboration across industry and through research into the patient should hopefully uh, yield us some, some better insights in the future and possibly some advances in treatment. Thank you, Peter. Quick lightning round for the panel. What one factor needs to improve or what you know, one piece of wisdom would you relay to the audience of what we need to do to improve upon with industry partnering, advocacy partnering, patient partnering, academic partnering, what's the one thing you'd like to see? Rick? Well, I believe that we all just need to uh, be aware of to see, to, to experience the one thing that we all share and all of our wonderful ambassadors in this photographic exhibition, but across the board, that's the one thing that we do share is humanity. Taylor? I think connection and knowing that, you know, patients knowing that they're being heard um, by these companies. Thank you. Matthew? Yeah, I, in a word, it's transparency and in both directions. Um, I think companies are often too protective of what they're doing. And uh, on the other side, it's sometimes very difficult for companies to access data and information from patient advocacy groups. And that's a, that's a challenge I think we all have to wrestle with. Um, but it's a, it's a real opportunity for us to improve in how we, how we work together and how we collaborate. Yeah, thank you, Peter. And from my perspective, it's the earliest possible collaboration with patients and the families affected with disease. The words that we hear from them very often in drive our researchers to, to uncover new findings and, and lead them on paths towards better discovery. So I think earlier collaboration with patients and hearing their voices, I think, is really critical. Mm -hmm. Panel, thank you very much. Uh, really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Margaret.